Hello again, and Leather here, back <coughs> again with this motionless electromagnetic generator. It, it was advised by Tom E. Bearden, and I'll um, write more in the description about it so that you can learn a bit about it, and you can do your own research about it. Basically, you input electricity, and it gives you a high electrical output. How does it do this? I'm not sure. I know that there must be a source of co course, maybe like electro like radio waves broadcasting into it, giving it a bit of a boost, but there has to be a source. You can't create energy or destroy it. It's a law of thermodynamics. It's the very first law. And you can't break the laws. You can break you might be able to break a theory, but not a law. Otherwise it's not a law. So let's start off by explaining what what's going on here. So this frequency generator or function generator goes into this amplifier with its negative and signal goes into here to the left channel which is powered by this lab power supply and goes into this coil with two diodes facing the same direction going into here kind of like this into the generator core with a magnet in the center and a core which I calculate to be around 400 turns which goes into a Resistance of 100,600 uh, ohms, and I'm going to prove it. So let's first measure how much, let's see, let me just uh, measure how much power is coming out. To measure power, you measure volts times current, right here. To find volts, you, multi you get current times resistance. So we devise this equation, volts times current times resistance of resistance equals power times resistance, you see here. Divide by resistance, they cross each other out. Voltage squared divided by resistance equals power. So that'll be useful later on when I explain this. So I set this to amperage, DC. And I put one probe connected here. No wrong probe. Uh, and the other one here. Give it a second. Oh. Bad connection. Let me just point one two six amps. So let's find that out. Point one two six amps times the volts. Times the volts. Now you can do the math along with me if you want to, to make sure I'm doing the math correctly. Of course. Probably should wear a glove. But don't worry, it's not that much voltage. Anyways, I think, let me just wear a glove, of course, just to be safe. Lesson of, here's a lesson. Always, always wear protection kits against electrical stuff. So I move the probe back to here. And I connect one probe to the, to one lead. And the other probe. Now the voltage and measure amperage isn't always very correct. What's going on here? It seems to be. Sh Great. Oh, I see. I can put it right here. The hole in place. I I have to do this with one hand, people. I'm sorry. Oh, great. Ah, here we go. Twenty-two point two volts. It matches up pretty accurately. So times twenty times twenty-two point two, and the total wattage coming out of this is two point seven nine seven two. But that's not the only source of energy. We have this source. So let's measure the volts coming into it. One probe here. It's a five volt USB adapter. So volt four point nine one. So four point nine one times the amperage. I have I had a very oh, well acquaintance teach me one lesson. If you have more energy coming out than in, you haven't identified all the we 
all the sources. If you have more energy coming in than out, you haven't identified all the receivers of the power. Because energy can be created or destroyed. I must elaborate. I'm not a f I don't want people to think I'm some free energy, well, not smart guy. Let's see, point oh point oh three. Very similar to the previous result. I've done this multiple times. So let's add that to 2.7972, and we get around this many watts. So one second. Actually, let me just uh, connect this here. So, uh, yeah, it says 0 0.07, but really it's, it's 0.126. Now let's measure the volts it's coming out. Well, to do that, I have to use something that can measure around 1,000 volts. This. I said to 1,000 volts DC. Now why DC? Isn't it AC? Not necessarily. Watch. When I put this here and this here, you can actually see it's starting to fluctuate a bit, but when I connect, when I connect the end, it goes backwards. However, when I connect it the other way, it doesn't go backwards. Instead, it goes forward. To, and since it's up to 1,000, we can measure the top row by uh, 250 by 4. So 150 times 4. Now we square that, divide by the resistance, and I'm going to show you the resistance. Let's see. Let me just uh, connect this. So I have to find a way to hold it in place. Otherwise, it's. This is a 100k ohm resistor. Let me just show you. 100 kilo ohm. You can read by the color. And I connect this probe here. Now, this part's unconnected to anything. This part, the other part over there is connected to the end of the coil, and the total resistance is. You gotta be kidding me. Oh, silly me. I set it to the amperage scale. I'm not the brightest. Which is why I'm posting this. Ah, oh, here we go. 100,600 ohms. 100,600. And we get. 3.5, this is how many watts coming out, this is how many watts are coming in. So we divide that by 2.9445, and let's see a coefficient of performance of 1.21, or 1.22. And how many watts am I getting out of this system? Around... Around 0.6 watts. That's pretty nice. Now, if we were to build this on a bigger scale and find out where the source is, we might be able to get more energy. Now, where is this coming from? I don't know. And I'm not really that sure about the physics. In fact, I had a physics teacher go over the phys uh, Tommy Bean's report, and, and she said it's not really written like a scientific paper. Anyways, if you have any advice, please do tell. And here's my circuit diagram. Hi, Lucy.